It was Decker Monday afternoon. Monday morning, I get up, maybe 6.30, and I've got a piece of music to write for the B-side. Hey, it's a B-side. I'm splitting it with the producer. What does it matter? So I get up, I put a record on to get me in the groove, and the first thing that came to my head, da 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 In '69, they contacted me from Montparnasse, 2000. He said, "Okay, we do a contract for 20 records, and you do what you want." Came to me and they said, "Well, you've done all this." strange stuff for the body. Can you do us a, a, a music library album? I, I said, of course I can, you know. I would tend to, to do that old classic thing of say yes to anything and then go and find out how to do it afterwards. I had an office in Denmark Street and I'd go across to KPM every day to have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. It was the hub of the pop scene in England. Denmark Street and our office, half of the music going on in London, we've come to our office. The thing about the library, I could be whoever I wanted to be. I could be funky, I could be poppy, I could be big band, I could be orchestral, I could be uh, angry, I could be happy, whatever I wanted to do, because library music requires all those emotions. I've always had an ability to write very fast, and I tend to write as a jazz musician would play it. So I'll think it, write it. It's like having a palette and you and a brush and you paint and you and you change and you mess about and you experiment and then something happens. Painting with sound. There are no rules. When I when I put together a, a project, I, I would sit down and write 20 titles that might be appetite to it. Basically imagining situations. You have to have all possible scenes in mind. Whatever could happen, you have to have the music for that. like that idea. Now, how's it going to feel? Yeah, it's got to be steamy, it's got to be hot, it's got to be free, loose. no way of influencing the usage of our music. That's in the nature of library music. A lot of library music was used in porn. But you see, with porn, that the, the, the sultry saxes or those certain sort of chords, that all went with it. But that, to, us, to us it's just music. It's, it's music allowing you to do certain things, but it also has that vibe of seduction and whatever. There was much more tension attached to a recording session for a record company than there was for the library, which it was just fun. We did three four-hour sessions a day, basically recording the woodwind brass rhythm sections in the day, scissor editing the multi-track tape, and then so the strings would come in in the evening and overdub on complete masters. 
you had to produce the performance there and then. I think in those days with uh, British Movie Tone News and all the other things, it was a much more cinematic market and therefore the scale of the compositions was proportionately larger. Whereas nowadays, of course, film scores are scored and the use of library music in those is more as incidental. It, it started with the, with the drum computer. Suddenly all the drummers were out of business. Suddenly, you know. And now the string players are out of business and the trumpet players as well. And, and uh, it's not a nice development for, for the music itself. It was a fact of life that if a, if a machine is invented, you can't uninvent it. A live orchestra is a live orchestra and will never be 100% replaced by a, a guy on the computer and his samples.